Uh, with respect to time frame, well, uh, the Antonine plague uh, was raging from 165 to 180s approximately with later relapses. And uh, the Cyprian plague raged from 249 uh, to 260s approximately. So this is the uh, specific time of interest for this research. And the area of interest uh, is, of course, the uh, Roman Empire. And uh, because uh, the hypothesis I uh, introduced, uh, as I said, was not my invention, but is a product uh, of academic debate and is resonating within the academic debate, I thought that it would be nice to introduce a couple of statements and opinions to see what is happening inside the academic debate on that topic. Uh, so we can go through these statements and you can see for yourself. So for example, Murat Tozan wrote that the Antonine pandemic undoubtedly caused social anxiety. This explains the growing popularity of the Asclepius cult in the Roman world in the second half of the second century AD. Geraldine van der Plek uh, then wrote that it is possible that Asclepius was especially worshipped at times of crisis by the military, such as during the Antonine plague and also the Marcomannic Wars. Uh, there is another statement. Uh, Georgi Mihailov again points to a connection with the Marcomannic Wars and the Antonine plague here, which coincide with the date of dedication and which could have prompted a boost in dedications, not just by soldiers, but also by civilians. Nasera Ben Sadiq argues that the profound attachment of Marcus Aurelius to Asclepius was probably reason enough to erect the sanctuary here. In this context, uh, the sanctuary is in Alambiasis in uh, Africa, but it could also be tentatively placed in the context of the Antonine Plague. Another statement, uh, after 180 BCE, there are no recorded instances of the Roman government calling upon Asclepius to ward off a plague. Even during the great epidemic of Marcus Aurelius' reign, there is no evidence that uh, Asclepius' aid was officially sought by the Senate. Uh, the author of that statement is Jill Renberg. And lastly, nothing seems to indicate a particular interest for Asclepius during the years of the Antonine Plague, which is by Christopher Brune. So we have a nice controversial debate here. Uh, with, uh, without uh, consensus in reach. And uh, we, we have also different levels being discussed uh, in this uh, debate. We have uh, there the level of popularity of Asclepius uh, among general population. And then we have the discussion on the popularity of Asclepius among Roman elites uh, or uh, Roman emperors. And we will be differentiating uh, between these uh, levels also in uh, today's talk. So uh, it is interesting that several of these researchers I, are pointing to the fact that there, there is uh, an increase uh, in the number or boost in uh, dedications uh, to Asclepius uh, in times of the Antonine Plague, and that this is some, somehow an indicator that the cult was more popular uh, in times of the Antonine Plague. So my first idea was that I wanted to explore this issue and I wanted to create a graph uh, depicting temporal distribution uh, of inscriptions dedicated to Asclepius to really see whether there is an increase uh, in these inscriptions uh, in times of the Antonine or Cyprian plague. Uh, so for this task, I decided to use epigraphic uh, database, a database of Heidelberg. Uh, which uh, is a very representative database for uh, Latin inscriptions uh, from the Roman Empire. There is around uh, 81,000 uh, inscriptions, uh, 30,000 fine spots, and 40,000 uh, votive inscriptions, which are the main inscriptions uh, for, uh, for our focus here. But uh, to create a graph of temporal distribution of inscriptions dedicated to Asclepius uh, in the Roman Empire is not a very easy thing to do because often the dating of this inscription is very rough. And often we can only date uh, these inscriptions on the level of whole, uh, of whole centuries. 
uh, and this is really a big issue when you create when you want to create uh, such a graph. Nevertheless, I uh, tried to tackle this issue by using so-called Monte Carlo methods. Uh, Monte Carlo methods uh, is a name for a, a class of algorithms that are trying to tackle deterministic problems by using randomness. Usually they are good for creating um, big sets of numbers uh, within specific margins or, or with uh, specific rules. And they are good for making probability distribution. So I can discuss in, in uh, greater detail what I did here. So for each inscription uh, dedicated to Asclepius in, uh, in data set collected from the epigraphic database of Heidelberg, I estimated 1000 possible dates of origins between the terminus post and antequem for each inscription. So you can see that the first inscription, for example, is dated between 151 and 200. And I estimated 1000 possible dates of origins for this inscription uh, within this range. Uh, and I did that for uh, each inscription dedicated to Asclepius. And then using these estimates, I simulated 1000 times the possible temporal distribution of these inscription, uh, inscriptions. And it is best to show it on a graph. So here you can see on the X axis, uh, the years and on the Y axis, you can see the number of inscriptions and each colored thread is one possible scenario uh, of the temporal distribution indicating how many uh, inscriptions can be dated uh, to a certain period of time. So you can see that indeed in uh, the second half of the second century and in the first half of the third century, there is an overall increase in uh, amount of inscriptions uh, that can be possibly dated to these uh, periods. And at the first sight, it may appear that uh, it can really be correlated to the times of these plagues. Uh, that there is really an increase in, in times of Antonine or, uh, or Cyprian uh, plagues. However, let's not, uh, let's not just jump to that conclusion yet, because if we compare it to the temporal distribution of inscriptions dedicated to Apollo, we can see a very similar trend in the temporal distribution there. We can see the largest uh, amount of inscriptions uh, can be dated to the second half uh, of the second century AD. And if we compare it uh, with, for example, inscriptions dedicated to Jupiter, again, the trend is very clear. And the trend is even clearer now because we have uh, so much more inscriptions dedicated to Jupiter than to Asclepius. So we can see really the trend uh, clearly. And again, there is uh, this increase in the second half of the second century and uh, the biggest spike in the number of inscriptions in the first half of the third century. And then there is the uh, abrupt uh, decrease after that in inscriptions. But what is even more striking is that if we compare it to the entire data set of 81,000 inscriptions in the epigraphic database uh, of Heidelberg, we can see again a very similar trend. And this means that the increase uh, in the number of inscriptions dedicated to Asclepius in the second half of the second century is not something specific uh, to the cult of Asclepius, but is characteristic for the whole habit of making uh, inscriptions. Uh, and I discussed this with uh, my friends, uh, Wojciech Kasia and Petra Hermankova in uh, Aarhus, who are dealing also with inscriptions and they found uh, the same trend for Greek inscriptions in, in these years. So this means that the argument uh, that the increase in inscriptions uh, dedicated to Asclepius is somehow an indicator that uh, the cult was more popular uh, in times of uh, the Antonine plague is, is difficult to uphold this argument in this context. Uh, and really um, 
the academic debate probably needs to step out of uh, its specific context and really look what is happening uh, elsewhere because we can see the same trend for the other deities and for the entire habit of making inscriptions. So uh, this was uh, the, and these were the temporal distribution. Now we can leave that uh, be and we can move to the geographical space. Uh, here I was uh, interested whether the cult of Asclepius is often, uh, lo uh, often appearing in locations near to the local outbreaks of the Antonine plague. So here on this map, you can see uh, inscriptions dedicated to Asclepius as green circles. And uh, I highlighted the provinces where we have the most representative spatial data. And then the blue hexagon, uh, blue hexagons are representing uh, potential local outbreaks of the Antonine plague. And you can uh, ask, how can we recognize a local outbreak of the Antonine plague? And how can, I, I can show you how, how these indicators uh, can look like. For example, from Bedaium, we have a Latin inscription uh, from year 182. Uh, so it, it's in the time frame of the Antoine plague. And this inscription is telling us that uh, several members of the same family died uh, perluem in Latin, which means uh, that they died because of pestilence. So it uh, it is a, a good indicator that uh, the Antonine plague may cause that, may have caused that. And uh, for Virunum, for example, which is, so that was Bedaium. And uh, for Virunum, uh, we have an inscription uh, in a similar time frame uh, from Mitraic College, stating that there was a great mortality cause with many members of their college uh, death. Uh, then uh, in Aquileia, we know that the Emperor Marcus Aurelius needed, it, needed to return uh, from that place because with his army because the Antonine plague hit his ranks. And uh, in Rosia Montana or in Albus, Alburnus Meyer at that time, we have an abrupt end in the documentation of local miners college. So these are the possible indicators of uh, local uh, outbreaks of the Antonine plague. And you can see that there are some overlaps in Bedaium, Virunum, or Rosia Montana, or even Aquileia, that uh, it seems uh, that the cult of Asclepius is overlapping with these local outbreaks. However, again, uh, this situation is very deceiving because again, we have other deities sharing the same locations such as Minerva, Apollo, or Jupiter. And as I said in the beginning, the dating of these inscription, uh, inscriptions is sometimes uh, very rough. So uh, there is the problem with uh, temporal uh, overlap because the terminus uh, post and antequem are, uh, the gaps between them are really wide in, these, uh, in many of these cases. Uh, and there is certainly no explicit connection in the inscriptions dedicated to Asclepius. Uh, to uh, Antonine plague. And uh, an additional factor is that we are not uh, able to recognize whether these inscriptions are there because uh, of a plague or because, for example, of, of military events, because uh, these points of local outbreaks are also places where there was a, a significant military presence uh, in the Roman Empire. So it is uh, really difficult, uh, the geographical aspect. But I wanted to bring a greater detail to that situation. So I incorporated also a layer of coin hoards from the uh, coin hoards of the Roman Empire database. Uh, dated, uh, um, I only selected coin hoards dated to the time of the Antonine plague uh, to uh, narrow down the selection of the places of focus, let's say. And you can see that we have uh, some overlaps in Bedaium, Virunum, and again, Rosia Montana. And coin hordes uh, are very interesting proxy for populational stress. Because if you think of it, 
uh, coin hoards are stashes of coins that were not collected by their previous owners. So they can be uh, an indicator that something negative happened uh, at their location. But again, it is very difficult to recognize whether these coin hoards are related to military events or uh, to the plague. Uh, but I, uh, I will be focusing in the future on these three locations and conduct a specific case studies to look into the uh, more into great detail what what was happening there and if the cult of Asclepius was uh, somehow connected to the negative events uh, happening there. But there is certainly no significant uh, huge spatial pattern uh, between the uh, spatial occurrences of the cult of Asclepius and the local outbreaks of Antonine Blake. And it is possible that the entire time we are looking uh, on a wrong deity, and it is possible that there is a deity more explicitly uh, linked as a combatant uh, against the Antonine Plague. Because already in Homer's Iliad, Apollo uh, is shooting plague arrows into the Greek camp. And we have four oracles uh, from Apollo in Clarus dealing with the plague uh, that ravaged a city dated uh, to the second century AD, so overlapping on the temporal scale with the Antonine plague. And these oracles are prescribing a series of sacrifices and the erection of a statue. And I have two examples of these uh, prescriptions here. For example, in Hierapolis Phrygia, Around all gates, built a precinct of Clarion Apollo, his sacred statue fitted with arrows that destroy disease as if he would with his shots drive far away the terrible illness. So now we know that uh, the Apollo had the power to shoot plague arrows to cause plague, but also to destroy the plague by his arrows. And in the second prescription, uh, it is, erect in front of the gates, uh, Apollo arrow carrier who dries out the plague. And when another terrible illness approaches the population in man killing intent, punishment will follow. And we have also interesting inscriptions uh, disseminated in different corners of the empire, such as Britain, Sardinia, uh, Dalmatia, Numidia, and Italy. Uh, this inscription is uh, always uh, the same. It's these de habusque secundum interpretationem uh, clari Apollinis. And so it is saying that uh, according to the interpretation of Apollo in Clarus, and the researchers are sort of uh, in agreement uh, that uh, this can be a fulfillment of the prescription uh, of, of the oracle in Apollo, uh, in, uh, of Apollo in Clarus, and that because it is disseminated in different corners of the empire, that this inscription is uh, somehow related to a widespread phenomenon, which the Antonine Plague certainly was. Uh, so this is also an important focus in the future for me to uh, discuss the role of uh, Apollo in all of this. And now we can leave the level of popularity of Asclepius in, uh, among the general population behind us. And we can move uh, to the question how we can measure the popul popularity of Asclepius among Roman elites or uh, among Roman emperors. And I think that the Roman coins are very suitable uh, medium to, uh, to answer that question because uh, Roman coinage is, uh, is very suitable for conveying uh, the ideologies and sentiments uh, from uh, Roman emperors. Let's take, for example, the Emperor Caracalla. Uh, emperor Caracalla was an explicit worshiper of Asclepius. He visited uh, his temple in uh, Pergamum, and according to uh, literary sources, such as Cassius Dio, uh, he was very inclined towards the healing deities. And this positive relationship between uh, Emperor Caracalla and the cult of Asclepius is also resonating on Roman coinage because under uh, the Emperor Caracalla, we have the biggest number of coin types uh, depicting uh, Asclepius issued. Uh, so uh, this is a good indicator that 
uh, coins are are the medium to look at in this uh, in these matters. So here I prepared uh, a graph where you can see uh, the timeline, and above the timeline you can see green bars, and these green bars are representing the years of pestilence in Rome according to Kyle Harper's database of pestilence. And above that, you can see yellow bars, and these are representing uh, the anniversary of introduction uh, Asclepius uh, to Rome. Uh, the first one is after 450 years, and the second one is after uh, 500 years. And uh, below the timeline, you can see the times when uh, there were coins issued depicting Asclepius under different emperors. And beside those coins commemorating the anniversary, you can see that there is a sort of a pattern emerging uh, in the ending years of uh, the Antonine Plague and the Cyprian Plague, which are the, the Great Plagues are the two last uh, green bars. So this is an interesting pattern and the first guess or the first uh, rough interpretation can be that the emperors were uh, trying to supplicate the god uh, of medicine after seeing the devastating effects of this plague. But uh, as I said, th these are ev uh, very preliminary results uh, and I will certainly uh, explore this pattern in, in further deaths um, in, in following uh, months and uh, years. This is another graph. Uh, focusing on on similar issue uh, you can see the number of coin types depicting asclepius in orange color and uh, then the number of coin types depicting apollo in uh, blue color and you can see there is uh, the increase in the coin types uh, depicting asclepius under caracalla here but what is very interesting is the unprecedented increase in the uh, number of coin types depicting apollo under emperors Val Val Valerian and Gallienus, who ruled directly in times of the Cyprian plague. And many of these coin types uh, under Gallienus or Valerian are showing uh, uh, Apollo with, uh, with the bow and shooting arrows. And as we already discussed, uh, Apollo and his bow and arrows are very uh, significantly connected uh, to the plague. So this is a very interesting indicator uh, that Apollo was somehow more popular uh, in times of Cyprian plague among uh, emperors. And now we can move to the last segment and here I would like to discuss how a specific local uh, variant of Asclepius, in this case Asclepius from Pergamum, how this figure was popular and uh, very relevant in a particular uh, social network of Roman elites. And this is a story of uh, four men. The first one is uh, Galen, the famous uh, physician uh, who was born in Pergamum and uh, he learned the arts of medicine in the temple of Asclepius in Pergamum. He served uh, even as a therapeutai of Asclepius. And later uh, he pursued uh, and explored the Antonine Plague. Uh, we have many descriptions of, of the Antonine Plague from, from this physician and he became a royal physician under Marcus Aurelius Commodus and also uh, was a royal physician of uh, Septimius Severus. The second relevant person here is the famous orator uh, Aelius Aristides, who also uh, was uh, living uh, near Pergamum and he suffered uh, from the Antonine Plague and he survived it and after uh, he wrote in his si sacred tales that he is thankful to Asclepius for his life. So another explicit worshipper of uh, Asclepius. And then we have Marcus Aurelius and Commodus uh, emperors who were active in times of the Antonine Plague. And I would like to uh, discuss how Asclepius resonated within this uh, social network on a very simple uh, network graph. So 
I was already talking about uh, Galen and uh, Aristides and their worship of Asclepius, but also Marcus Aurelius worshipped uh, Asclepius. He said that uh, his temple in Pergamum uh, was one of, one of the most famous ones in, in the Mediterranean world. And also in uh, Marcus Aurelius' meditations, uh, we can read there that it is important uh, to fulfill the prescriptions of Asclepius. And Asclepius in Pergamum had uh, really an easy way uh, to the uh, royal household and to Marcus Aurelius in the time of Antonine Plague, because uh, Aelius Aristides was in uh, contact with Marcus Aurelius. They exchanged letters. They even had the same philosophic teacher, Alexander of Cotiaeum, and uh, Aelius Aristides even delivered an uh, uh, oration directly to Marcus Aurelius in Smyrna. And uh, Galen uh, was royal physician in, uh, of Marcus Aurelius, so of course he was in direct contact with, uh, with the emperor also. But we also have a mention of Asclepius between uh, those two. Uh, that is directly tied to the years of the Antonine Plague. It is from uh, year 169, I believe. And uh, Marcus Aurelius invited Galen uh, to accompany him when Marcus Aurelius wanted to uh, campaign against uh, Germans. And Galen uh, refused this invitation of Marcus Aurelius and told uh, the emperor that Asclepius forbade him to go uh, in his, uh, and that Asclepius told, uh, told him uh, in his dream. Uh, so this is very interesting. Uh, it is a very interesting excuse and it is also showing us that to use Asclepius in an excuse uh, in the face of emperor is something relevant and legitimate to do uh, in time of uh, Antonine plague. So very interesting, really. And then we have Commodus. Uh, Commodus was, of course, the son of Marcus Aurelius, and Galen was his royal physician as well. But we do not have any direct or explicit worship of Asclepius attested. However, during Commodus, we have increase in the number of coin types uh, depicting uh, Asclepius in Pergamum. Uh, here are the number of the coin types from Pergamum uh, under different uh, emperors with uh, depiction of Asclepius. And you can see that really there is a high number of coin types under Commodus. So this can tell us that the relationship between uh, Asclepius, uh, and his, his cult in Pergamum and the royal household was uh, uh, somehow very important uh, in, in those years. So uh, we can uh, draw several conclusions from these different segments I was uh, talking about. So if we go back to the temporal distribution of, of uh, the inscriptions dedicated to Asclepius, we can see uh, that uh, their increase uh, in the second half of the second century is really uh, not something specific to the cult of Asclepius, but is uh, characteristic for the whole habit of making inscriptions in the, in the Mediterranean. And as I was saying, the academic debate needs to look into the broader context of things and that the argument, uh, to, to uphold the argument from that angle is uh, very difficult now. There is also no recognizable uh, relationship between local uh, outbreaks and the plague uh, and the inscriptions dedicated to Asclepius on a spatial level. And I need to look more uh, to the role of Apollo in all of this. And lastly, we at least uh, we saw that Asclepius was popular, popular and relevant uh, among Roman elites, uh, mainly among Roman emperors in times of plague. And that we uh, can see that we can focus more in the future on the analysis of Roman coins. And that would be all from me today. Thank you for your attention.